I got a lot of review requests for a pen by this brand, um, Pinader, and the story with Pinader is I think they've been making luxury products for a while, but recently they have been joined by Dante Del Vecchio of, um, of Visconti fame. He, he transitioned from Visconti to another company. They've been putting out a couple of pens, and I was very interested to uh, to to look at these pens. I mean, as if if you've been following me for a while, you know that I I kind of liked uh, uh, Visconti. Um, I've definitely had my share of nib issues with Visconti, but I really like the designs of the Visconti pens. So now Mr. Del Vecchio has moved to Pinader. Um, he's a very interesting designer. He has a very interesting vision that I, I really appreciate. I think he really has designed pens uh, that are, are revolutionary in, in shape and in, in functionality. So uh, Visconti has a, a special place in my heart, also because my first serious pen was a Visconti. So I was very interested to see what Mr. Del Vecchio would do uh, for Pinader. So, here we have a pen, this was sent to me by Goldspot, a kind thank you, because again, a lot of review requests for a Pinader pen. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like about it, and what I not like about it. Let's get started! Was that weird? That was pretty weird. Sorry. Okay, so let's have a look at this Pinader Avatar. Uh, it comes in a rather nice box. Uh, there are actually four finishes of these pens, uh, the, the Avatar model right now. This happens to be the Saffron Yellow. Um, let's go into that when I show you the parts of the pen. For now, I want to look at the box. I found this a very interesting contraption because this cardboard outer sleeve completely comes off and it completely knocks flat, uh, which is interesting. Let me get that out of the way. And then we have this interesting box, which as you can see, is uh, slanted. Interesting. Reminds me a little bit of some of the Visconti boxes, which kind of had this, this shape, like the, the Van Goghs of Van Gogh. I like the Pineda logo, very classic, and it does say Firenze 1774, so they've been around for quite a while in Florence. Box. I don't know if I really care for this slanted angle, but that's that's personal. What I will say is it feels very, very luxurious. This is cushioned, has that Pineda logo. This has the Pineda logo, also cushioned. Then you have your little uh, bed for the pen, which will definitely hold that pen in place, which is, oops, which is nice so, so well that I had trouble pulling it out there. She said. Um, <clears throat> then there is this which is social media, um, a, a bit of background on the pen. This looks like warranty. Story of the brand and filling instructions. So you have all these little things separated into little booklets brochures, I would almost say, and they fit neatly into this falling thing with a nicely, um, isn't that called, embossed, uh, so the, the, the lettering that stuff stands out, it's actually in, in, in sort of in, in reverse relief. Then in here, it's a little treasure trove, I'm just going to take that, get that box out of the way. Uh, we have this, this uh, from Pinader, which is actual stationery which I thought was rather a nice touch. You have little cards in different colors with envelopes, matching envelopes, um, which is kind of cool because how often do you purchase a fountain pen and it comes with four bits of stationery you can use to write someone a letter? And not being being sarcastic here, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm genuine. I, I think this is a very nice touch. No way I can get this back on there, so I'm just going to forget about that. Cool. A nice complete package. Now let's look at the pen, and I think we can zoom in a little bit here. The pen. So here we have the Pinader Avatar in the saffron yellow finish. And then there's a couple of things to, to talk about with this pen, which I think is kind of neat. Let's start with the past the pen first. So right on top here, you have this, this design, I have to say, reminds me a little bit of the Visconti Michelangelo. No, uh, the Rembrandt, sorry, which has that rounded off top. 
interesting. So no real finial, no no Penator logo medallion or something, but just this this clip construction, uh, which is neat. The clip is spring loaded, and the clip is uh, shaped like a quill. Now of course the uh, fletching, the little hairs on the feather were actually cut off for a writing quill, but let's face it, if you were to accurately represent that on a clip, it would just look like a stick. So it makes sense to, to put the little uh, uh, the, the fletching on there. Now we have this center band uh, which says Pinator. Um, it, I'm oh, sorry, I have to have a, a good look at this here. Yeah, I think that was it. Uh, Pinator, and then if you turn that around, you actually have the skyline of Florence with the uh, the Duomo and uh, th th this this nice nice eye for detail there. I uh, I definitely recognize a bunch of these buildings from the time I was there. So that's that that's nice. It's a nice touch. The pen slopes down in a very I think nice manner. It just tapers down. The bottom of the barrel, there's nothing, it's the same material as the, the whole barrel and uh, cap. And the pen has a magnetic closure. Then we have a metal section which tapers down, then flares out a little bit. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's not, it doesn't keep tapering down. It, it flares out a bit again, so it's very slightly hourglass shaped. And then here we have a nice little uh, uh, steel nib. Um, Fleur de Lis, classic design. It says Pineda. It says uh, I had to wipe some ink off. It says 1774, and it says Punta Iridio, in other words, Iridium Point. And then it says I think M. Sorry, I have to reach around the camera. You see, yes, M for medium. So there is that steel nib and no breather hole, which doesn't really make a difference. I'm just pointing it out as a bit of interest. Turn it over, we have this plastic feed and we can unscrew the barrel to look at the converter, supplied converter uh, that is labeled um, Pineda, but as you can see you can sort of scratch off uh, the lettering, so that's, that's not that great. Standard international cartridge converter that's always nice, it means you may have one of those converters lying around or you can just put in the cartridges that you happen to have in a drawer or something, so that is really not that bad. Pen size, interesting section, is fairly long, I find that rather comfortable to hold, even though it's a fairly thin pen and I typically prefer pens with a little bit more girth, that's very personal, <coughs> sorry, personal, but I find this comfortable to hold and the pen posts securely and then it's a rather a nice size, I would say. Okay. I think that's all great. I think we need to see how the pen writes. And that's what's coming up now. So, Nib had dried out a little bit, I think, because I, I had it uncapped for, for a uh, couple of seconds. So here we have that avatar. If you don't mind, I'm not going to write down the saffron bit. Uh, this is a medium steel nib, and the ink is diamine. Blood orange. Okay. Two things I noticed when I was testing out this nib. The first thing is I find this rather a skinny medium. Uh, I, I, I medium find those are relative terms. Medium for one company can be completely different from medium of another company. But this to me is almost like a like a well maybe Japanese medium. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of bear that in mind when you when you select your nib. Fast writing. Now I think I said I noticed two things about the nib. One is that it is a bit on the fine side. Uh, the other thing is it is nice. It, it does have a, a pretty nice flow. Um, I, I would not really call this a, a gusher of a nib, but as you can see, it's definitely not super dry. As always, very, very careful. But line variation... You can squeeze out just a little bit, but as always, be careful. And there is the reverse writing. 
It is a smooth nib, I will say that. It is a very pleasant writer. And you can do that, and then you turn your medium, which I think is more like a fine, into a extra fine. And that's possible too. So, let's see what I like about it, and what do I not like about the pen. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Panader Avatar, in this case, in saffron yellow? There's a couple of things that I really like. I like the way it feels. It's comfortable to hold, and I, although it is slightly thinner section, I, typ I prefer something with a bit more girth. I think to many people this will be very comfortable to hold because it is shaped. The, the shape is right. It, it feels good. I like that. It's hard not to love this material. I mean, that that is a, a very pretty, intense orange, and saffron is definitely uh, well well chosen as a name. Very nice. I like the details. The quill clip, the Visconti, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, Florence, ooh, interesting, Freudian, uh, the, uh, the Vis uh, I almost said it again, the Florence skyline on the center band, that's all neat. I, I, I like it. Nice eye for detail. I like that. The nib, it writes comfortably. Good number six size nib, uh, some some nice detail on it with the fleur de lis, uh, and it, it writes pleasantly, albeit finely for what it is, for something that's labeled a medium. I find this on the fine side, but as I said, nib grades are subjective. They, they vary from company to company. It's a relative thing. So in this case, it may be medium for this company. That doesn't mean it, it will write the same way as, say, a Lamy medium or something. So I like all those things. What do I not like so much? Well, um, the magnetic closure is one thing. It has this, this magnetic closure and I seem to recall from the other pens I've used with magnetic closures, 3925, uh, X800 is one, but also, and I'll come back to that later, some of the Visconti pens, those magnets were a bit more powerful. This feels a little flimsy. Now, the cap does not fly off, so I hope I didn't just... No, I didn't get ink on there. Um, but... It feel it just feels a little flimsy. That's all I'll say about that. The medium nib writes, in my mind, really more like a fine, and that's really not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something to be mindful of, should you want to order one of these pens. I think the biggest issue this pen has to overcome is its price. Uh, they are not cheap. Steel nib cartridge converter, two hundred and eighty dollars. Um, this one was sent to me by Goldspot. They have them at the moment I was shooting this. They had them on sale for two hundred twenty-four dollars. But that's still quite a couple of dollars for what I think is, as I said, resin pen, steel nib cartridge converter, and that is that's a bit tough because. Although it's beautiful, I'm not sure if I would necessarily pay that price for this pen. Now the final thing I wanted to say, and now I lean back because I really need to uh, think about how to phrase this. There is of course an elephant in the room, and that is that Mr. Del Vecchio has left Visconti and has moved towards Pinader. So the elephant is how does this pen relate to the average Visconti pen? Well, I would compare it to one of two pens. One is a Van Gogh, the, the Van Gogh models, uh, which I think also in design are quite similar, with the rounded off cap, the magnetic closure, all that stuff. Uh, or the the Rembrandt. Sorry, it's close to the Rembrandt. I always confuse the two. It's two Dutch painters and I'm Dutch for, for goodness sakes. Um, the Rembrandt uh, is has the, the rounded off uh, cap, uh, has a magnetic closure, and then there is the Vahoch, the Van Gogh series, um, which also has the, the magnetic closure. In my mind, this pen feels a bit cheaper than those pens. Now, that could be this specific material. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, um, but it doesn't have exactly the same feel to me. That is offset by the fact that this nib writes, 
and, and there are many, many Visconti nibs that write perfectly fine out of the box, but there are, unfortunately, also, still hear this from viewers, many, many Visconti nibs that do not write flawlessly out of the box. Now, here's the deal with all this. I think what you should ask yourself is, is it really a sensible comparison? Because the fact that Mr. Del Vecchio, who founded Visconti, who did the designs, who designed some, some beautiful pens, some of which are my favorite pens of all time, um, the fact that he has left Visconti and moved to another brand doesn't mean that he is now, quote unquote, doing Visconti in, in, under another name, right? It's just that he brings his experience in design, in, in his love for pens, to another brand. So I think you should be a little careful to try to compare the two brands. But of course, let's face it, it's a logical thought to think, well, I know my Visconti's, but how do these feel in relationship to that? Well, it's a bit different. And I'm not saying that to, to try and get out of the comparison, because I've given you my comparison. To me, it does not have the feel of Visconti, the average Visconti does. But it's a fledgling effort. Right? Panado is branching out into these pens. They're starting up now. I will follow the Panado pens very eagerly because I think there is some really cool stuff going on. The clip is nice, the, the, the center band, the nib is good. The material is nice, so there is definitely a lot going for it. And I very much want to see to what heights this brand will soar in a couple of years. Now, if that is not the most constructive feedback anyone can give, I don't know what it is. So, there you have it. That's all there's to it. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.